So how do you get a job at the fan companies? Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. These jobs are extremely competitive because they have a very high salary. Today, I'm here with David, who is a software engineer at a fan company. Hey, what's up guys? My name is David and I've been working in tech for about six months now. So what should we do in order to find a job? So like I said in the internship video, the easiest way to get into these companies is to go in as an intern and convert to full-time afterwards. But barring that, then you'll have to go get an interview, which shouldn't be too hard if you're relatively experienced and then pass the interviews essentially. And the interview process for full time usually looks a little bit different from the intern ones because while intern interviews are typically just a couple of phone rounds and a coding challenge maybe, how the full time ones look is usually they're a lot more rigorous and a lot longer. A typical process would be something like you apply online, you get a referral or a recruiter reaches out to you and then you'll get sent a coding challenge. Coding challenge is basically just like some website, really similar to LeetCode actually, except they time you and you have to complete a set of questions before the time limit and get all the test cases passing. So you'll do that, it'll usually take about an hour or two, and if you pass that, then you'll move on to the phone round. How phone rounds usually work is you get on a phone call with an engineer at the company you're trying to apply for, and they'll open up something like CoderPad or Codility or a Google Doc, and essentially what that is is just a text document that both of you can edit at the same time. And they'll ask you some questions, and you'll probably be expected to code it up in the text editor in real time so the interviewer can see what you're coding and what your thought process is and you'll be kind of similarly to your other interviews. Give your thought process while coding it out, run through the test cases, ask clarifying questions, all that interview good stuff that you'll see in cracking the coding interview except you'll do it over the phone on a shared coder pad. And if you pass the phone round, what happens is you'll go on site typically. You're, the company will pay for a flight and a hotel and like a daily meal budget. So it's actually pretty swanky. Wait, they pay for everything? They pay for everything. They're expected to pay for everything because you're spending your time to go to their company, right? So they'll usually fly you out. You'll get a meal budget. You'll get a hotel. And then one of the days you'll go on site to the company. Wow, that is pretty cool. So when you go on site, this is kind of the big bar because you'll typically get something like four to five interviews on in a row. Depending on what level you're applying for, you'll definitely have a couple of rounds of algorithm interviews. That's the interviews that I talked about before in the internship video where you're expected to get some like small example thing of some algorithm question puzzle that you have to solve. You'll definitely have at least two rounds of that. And the other rounds will be some combination of either more coding rounds if you're more of a junior engineer or more design rounds. For example, like, can you dis uh, design Instagram for me? How would you design Instagram from like the high level architecture? What components would you need? Why did you pick these components? Like, what if this situation happened? How would you deal with it? Those types of questions are usually aimed more towards senior engineers, although I have seen new grads getting these as well. And you'll typically also have something like a behavioral round, which is just kind of a non-technical round. These are the interviews that you'd see more common in other industries, and it'd be something mm -hmm. like, why do you wanna work here? What is your motivation? What are your goals? What are your greatest weaknesses? And stuff like that. But these rounds are also very important, especially as you get more and more senior because they'll start asking about what kind of projects have you done? How did you approach working with other teammates? Like, How did you deliver results even though it was challenging and you had these blockers and stuff like that? And they'll gauge how good you are at working on a team. So do you think behavioral questions or technical questions are more important? Or are they equally weighted? They're all equally weighted. You can, I've seen people fail because of behavioral rounds. I failed because of behavioral rounds. So it's not like you can just cruise past the behavioral. You have to prepare for those as well. Cracking the Code interview also has a section on those that I would highly recommend reading. Often what the case is, is if you don't do that well on behavioral or the design rounds, you might get down leveled. They give you more signal on how senior someone should be. Whereas if you ace all the coding rounds, it doesn't really up level you anything. So for example, some cases what I've seen is like someone kills the coding rounds, but the design round, they only did so-so. So while they might have been originally slotted for senior engineer, they actually get offered a level lower than that in the end. And then let's say you actually pass your interview. Congratulations, you did it. What else do you need to worry? I think there's another step, right? One difference between full-time and internship positions is that you almost never negotiate your intern compensation. But as a full-time, you typically are able to get some leeway when you negotiate. So there's a lot of really good resources out there about how best to negotiate your offer, but the simple rules are you should always negotiate because you just can. You might as well try. Shoot your shot. Shoot your shot? Shoot your shot, yeah. <laughs> You should also never give the first number. Let them tell you how much they're willing to offer and then you kind of work your way from there. Again, I'm not really an expert on negotiations, so a really good article about this would be if you search Hasib Q, 
Airbnb or Hasib Q's salary negotiation. He wrote a really good two-part blog series about how he negotiated to something like 350k or something at Airbnb. Wow. Yeah, some insanely high compensation number. So if he can do it, you can do it as well. Part of how much leeway you get when you negotiate is a, do you have any other competing offers? Because if a company knows you can just drop their offer and walk away, they're a lot more willing to pay for you. And B, how well you did during the interview. Mm -hmm. So people who clear the technical bar like really, really well, they have a lot of leeway because the company really wants them. So I know, for example, Google has really, really deep pockets. If you do really well in the technical round, they can offer like 200,000 plus for new grads. Um, whereas if you barely scrape past the technical bar, chances are the hiring manager or the compensation committee, they're going to give you the bare minimum of that like new grad band just because you didn't really do all that well. So it's important to do well on the interviews and to have a lot of offers at the same time so you have leverage when you negotiate. Would companies ever retract their offer because you try to negotiate? So this is something a lot of people are afraid of and I think it does happen pretty rarely, but as long as you're respectful and you frame it as more of a, how can we come to an agreement so that I can start working here? If you frame it like that, then I don't think there's any problems. The only cases I've ever heard of, of uh, offers being rescinded or when people negotiated in a really aggressive or kind of an unprofessional way that led to their offers being rescinded. But as long as you're respectful and you, yeah, it's fine. They expect this. Recruiters are trained to deal with negotiation and they expect you when you get an offer to try negotiating with them. Do you need competing offers in order to negotiate well? So I wouldn't say they're a hard requirement, but a lot of the times if you don't have a competing offer, it's probably, you almost have no leverage in the negotiation. Important thing to note though, is that if you're someone who's already working in tech, your current job is an alternative. So you can say like, okay, you're offering me this much, but to leave my current job, then you'd have to offer me this much. And sometimes that line of argument can work pretty well. Now for a fast round of questions that people asked on Instagram and my YouTube community tab. Are you ready? Yes. Let's go for it. So do you need to go to college in order to get a job at these fan companies? You don't need to go to college, strictly speaking, but almost everyone has a degree, so it'd be extremely hard if you didn't have one. What are the main coding languages people use at the big tech companies? It depends a lot on the company. Different companies have different things that they like, but almost all of them use JavaScript from the front end and use some sort of like backend language like Java or C++. So what should you be learning? I hate this question, don't ask me that. Why? Because it's so dumb, like people are like, oh, what language should I use to get into a big company? Like, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'll answer the question. You don't need any specific language, just learn one of the ones that are really popular, like Java, C++, Python, JavaScript, Go, whatever. Big companies do not want you because you're really good at writing Java, for example. They want you because you're malleable, you're a generalist engineer who can learn any tool that they need to pick up. And honestly, no programming language in this world is so hard that you can't just spend like two weeks on the weekends learning and drilling it into your head. That's enough to get you productive and you can pick up the rest along the way. So it doesn't matter. TLDR, it doesn't matter. Does the school you go to matter? So the school you go to only matters for getting the interview in the first place and even then when you're relatively inexperienced. So when you're a new grad or an intern, the school you go to is almost the strongest signal they can get from you. And when you're more experienced, the years of experience that you have and what you've been doing up until then are far more important than the school you went to. The key thing to keep in mind is that once you get the interview, I don't even think the interviewers can see what school you went to. They can't even see your resume anymore. So at that point, whether you went to like the top most prestigious engineering school in the world or you went to some random school that no one's ever heard of, it doesn't matter anymore as long as you can pass the interview and answer the questions. That's good news because you don't need to worry because you always have a chance. Does a major you take matter or am I able to learn coding on my own and get a interview and maybe get a job? It's going to be really hard to get an interview if you took a major that's not computer science or something numeric, like closely related like physics, statistics, computer engineering, electrical engineering. There are people who majored in stuff like the humanities or chemistry who end up working at these companies, but almost all of them, what I've seen is they either went through a coding boot camp or they did some small internship at another company firsthand before getting into Fang. So as a business student, are you saying I can't be a software engineer? I mean, if you really wanted to, you probably could. It's an uphill battle though. Gotcha. <laughs> I'll let you do your thing, I'll do my thing. Okay. I'll spread knowledge to the world. Is your job stressful? It can be stressful at times, but there are also a lot of times where it's really relaxed. I would say on average, not really. 
Okay. So how much money do you make as a software engineer? Well, half food. Actually, you know what? You can watch this video all about how much software engineers make. He's going to give you a breakdown of the salaries. Click right here and click subscribe for more of these videos so you don't miss a single one. My name is Hafu Go. This is David. I will see you next time. You know what? Just remember this. Go for it.